Good morning, everyone. Welcome to St Matthew's and a very happy Father's Day to all fathers. Our opening hymn is For the Beauty of the Earth. Good morning. Good morning, Father. And a uh, very happy Father's Day to all those who are involved, which I suppose is all of us. We meet in the name of God, who is Creator, Living Word, and Life Giving Spirit. Amen. I'm going to ask for uh, Jonathan to go and lead us in the prayer for Father's Day. A prayer for all fathers. Heavenly Father, you entrust us, your son Jesus, the child of Mary, to care for Joseph and an earthly father. Bless all fathers as they care for their families. Give them strength and wisdom, tenderness and... And patience. Support them in the work they have to do. Protect those who who look to them as we look to you for love and salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our rock and defender. Amen. Amen.
The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. The Lord says, just like the clay in the potter's hands, so are you in my hand. We bring our daily lives and the life of the world to share in the light and hope that God offers. We acknowledge the first peoples of this land and all who call Australia home. We give thanks for God's loving care for families across the world and ask God's special blessing and protection for all who are in our hearts. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. I'd like to give each other a sign of, of peace. Uh, downstairs and upstairs. <laughs> And we continue. Almighty God, to, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. As we come before God, let us pray for ourselves and our world in all its need. God our Creator, you have made us one family on earth, but many find themselves separated instead of connected. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Jesus our Redeemer, we share your forgiveness, but our world is sharing fear and anxiety, especially remembering the people of Ukraine. Christ have mercy. Christ, Christ have mercy. Living Spirit of God, your mercies rise new every morning. Help us to share the light of hope in these challenging times. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May God forgive us, Christ renew us, and the Spirit enable us to live in love. Amen. Amen. Let us pray the two colleagues for this day. Gracious God, the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom stands our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom. Defend your children against all assaults of their enemies and establish your kingdom of peace justice and love. Amen. Lord of the ages, you have called your church to keep watch in the life of the world and to discern the signs of the times. Grant us the wisdom of your spirit that we may proclaim your prophetic word and as faithful disciples may finish the work you have given us to do through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. You please be seated as Sue Fife is going to 
bring us the reading. You may know that uh, Sue is a member of the Mothers' Union. She represented the Mothers' Union in St Matthews at, uh, at uh, baptism yesterday for um, an old St Matthews family. She also goes to our nursing homes and retirement villages uh, playing hymns for our services and very often when people are otherwise disengaged through uh, time and infirmity as she plays those hymns suddenly they are on the same page and it's wonderful to see people um, belonging in such a wonderful way. Thank you Sue. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord Come, go down to the potter's house, and there I will let you hear my words. So I went down to the potter's house, and there he was, working at his wheel. The vessel he was making of clay was spoiled in the potter's hand, and he reworked it into another vessel, as seemed good to him. Then the word of the Lord came to me, can I not do with you, O house of Israel, just as this potter has done, says the Lord? Just like the clay in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand, O house of Israel. At one moment I may declare concerning a nation or a kingdom that I will pluck up and break down and destroy it. But if that nation concerning which I have spoken turns from its evil. I will change my mind about the disaster that I intended to bring on it. And at another moment, I may declare concerning a nation or a kingdom that I will build and plant it. But if it does evil in my sight, not listening to my voice, then I will change my mind about the good that I had intended to do to it. For the word of God in scripture for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The choir will lead us uh, in Psalm 139. O oh Lord, you have searched me out and known me.
Rosie Satchell is going to bring us the next reading. And Rosie represents that part of the St Matthew's community that we often pray for, um, being a proud farmer and farmer's wife, and of course now moving into town uh, and still um, looking after her family. A reading from the letter to Philemon. Paul, a prisoner of Christ Jesus, and Timothy, our brother, to Philemon, our dear friend and co-worker, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. When I remember you in my prayers, I always thank my God because I hear of your love for all the saints and your faith toward the Lord Jesus. I pray that the sharing of your faith may become effective when you perceive all the good that we may do for Christ. I have indeed received much joy and encouragement from your love because the hearts of the saints have been refreshed through you, my brother. For this reason, I am appealing to you for my child, Onesimus, whose father I have become during my imprisonment. Formerly, he was of little use to you, but now he is indeed useful both to you and to me. I am sending him, that is, my own heart, back to you. I wanted to keep him with me so that he might be of service to me in your place during my imprisonment for the gospel but I preferred to do nothing without your consent in order that your good deed might be voluntary and not something forced. Perhaps this is the reason he was separated from you for a while, so that you might have him back forever, no longer as a slave, but more than a slave, a beloved brother, especially to me, but how much more to you both in flesh and in the Lord. So if you consider me your partner, welcome him as you would welcome me. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us. Thanks be to God. We stand if we're able as we welcome the gospel. Alleluia, alleluia. Jesus says that whoever will not forego all else for him cannot be his disciple. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory, Glory be, be to you, you O Lord. Now, large crowds were traveling with Jesus, and he turned and said to them, Whoever does not carry the cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. For which of you, intending to build a tower, does not first sit down and estimate the cost to see whether he has enough to complete it? Otherwise, when he has laid a foundation and is not able to finish, all who see it will begin to ridicule him, saying, this fellow began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king going out to wage war against another king will not sit down first and consider whether he is able with 10,000 to oppose the one who comes against him with 20,000? If he cannot, 
Then, while the other is still far away, he sends a delegation and asks for the terms of peace. So, therefore, none of you can be my, become my disciple if you do not give up trusting in your possessions. For the gospel, the good news of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. My words be to the glory of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the freedom of the Spirit. Amen. Will you please be seated? And uh, very happy, happy, happy Father's Day. I'm sure every father here has enjoyed, uh, well, not a sleep in, I would have thought today. It's a bit of a sad thing, isn't it? But uh, perhaps a breakfast in bed? No? No? <laughs> oh, well, perhaps next year. Uh, dear, dear Lord and Father of mankind, forgive our foolish ways, goes the well-known hymn from John Greenleaf Whittier, the uh, uh, famous American anti-slaver. Voltaire, the French philosopher, said that if God has made us in his image, we have more than returned the compliment. Our uh, strengths of... Uh, fatherhood has uh, been through different periods and our different models of fatherhood and stereotypes um, have been managed to place upon God's shoulders, bestowed upon our Creator. Remember when the parental model was, spare the rod and spoil the child? Do you remember that? Goodness me, you can still feel the feather duster. Uh, God at that stage was an angry father who needed to be appeased. Or is it a wonder that God our Father has been an old man on a cloud when government decisions were made by old men in clouds of cigar and tobacco smoke? Just as Mother Mary fulfilled all the ideas of a school prefect or a Sunday school black and white Joan of Arc uh, movie, trapped in the 1940s and the 1950s, ever so meek and mild, without any of the strength and independence of modern mothers. So in these days, when science and medicine have revealed the extraordinary complexity of gender roles and the variety of family units, well, it's really nothing like uh, the biblical narrative at all. Nothing like, sadly, Enid Blyton. So I'll be very cautious in digging out one of my older servers and just dishing it out. Or perhaps some... Um, an older sermon from fatherhood from the 1950s and pretending it hasn't um, been passed as used by date. However, one principle undoubtedly remains from the idea of uh, fatherhood and motherhood and parenthood is the fact that we are all related. We are all connected. And that is a reality that the COVID experience has underlined, the importance of relationships, caring for each other in a practical way, for every person in God's family and for ours. But in that caring, we are placed at the crossroads day by day, asking the question about our own priorities and the cost of that to us personally. If counting the cost or the way, and those questions are answered by each one of us, and also as individually, but also as an organisation, as a church. It's all about discipleship, the cost of following. It's our spiritual and ethical navigation systems that are really are being brought into question. And that's at the very heart of our reading today. And for us, I think it's pretty tough, because times are tough. If you look at the news, there's a great deal of every day of anxiety about um, how we are financially going down the drain or just about to. And in these days, the temptation to look after our own interests 
rather than looking around us and caring for the most vulnerable when they're even more in need. It sounds so simple in a song or a mission statement, in a poster or in a sermon, but it can soon unravel or start to go stale or limp when you take it out of the packet. I don't need to tell you that not all the decisions of uh, Christian individuals, governments, institutions or churches have been inspired by Christian charity and selflessness. Uh, you can easily come a cropper, I can tell you. I, I can think of more than one church treasurer here at St Matthews which has been stood against a wall by a registrar and screamed at. When economic forecasts are grim, we find the crossroads a tough place to stop, to put the needs of others before our own. I was looking last night uh, at the internet. Um, I just noticed in 2005, um, I was uh, in England, and we were asked for an extra 400,000 pounds. 400,000 pounds is a lot of money. Um, particularly when things weren't going well for farmers. And uh, our farmers were doing things particularly tough and uh, there were all sorts of um, problems were happening and people were hurting um, financially and in so many other ways. And at that moment, uh, the uh, Diocese at Evansbury and Ipswich suggested that everyone dig deep because the church is hungry like a crying baby. Uh, well, I suggested at the time that since the church had so much silver, and we had some of it, when no living person had ever seen it. It was so valuable that it couldn't be taken out of the safe. And so I said, since no one's seen it, and it's worth such a lot of money, what a good idea it would be to take it out of the safe, put it through an auction house, and, and put some money where it was really needed. What a good idea that was. Well, I was on the front of the paper. The bishop was there and I was there. Well, I can tell you who won. That silver is still in the safe. But nevertheless, I think the principle remains. I'm sure when banks and shops withdraw from communities, churches, particularly small ones, are even more valuable. Particularly small, unviable churches financially unviable churches. They're the ones that we really need to keep. We don't really need to sell those ones. In fact, they've become almost essential. But nevertheless, that doesn't seem to sink within the thick heads um, of most people who are making the financial decisions for religious institutions. At the crossroads, the decision should be easy. Where is the need here? What should we do? Where should our heart be? and then ask where our wallet should be. But the other way normally goes around. In these days, when heads are being turned to our financial needs, we have, we know, every day at St Matthews, just next door. Oh, this is a Matthews, I know. But uh, sometimes it's just next door, sometimes it's the garden, sometimes it's the phone. But more and more needs uh, across our community are becoming evident. Every day we hear a crisis of housing and health care, increasing costs of living and fuel costs. And it would be tempting for us to be more careful with our pennies, to start counting every little bean. And we are counting them, and we know things are tough. But instead, St Matthews has looked for more and more ways to help others, not fewer ways. More than once, uh, we have, I can tell you, been in trouble. And I'm not sure whether your ears have been burning, but perhaps they should have been. Uh, because I can tell you, I've had an email or two that I'd love to publish somewhere, uh, talking about the way that Sir Matthews asks for help for the community, but does not ask for help for itself. And they said, this is entirely wrong. We've got a business to run. Well, we don't. We certainly don't. We don't have a business to run. We have a life to live. We have a community to share with. Um, and that's the only reason we are here. Uh, St Matthew's is an enormous advertisement for unconditional love without a price tag on it. And that's what that's about. And people do know about that. 
people who have been damaged in so many other ways, people who have been frightened off by churches, people who have been judged and, and, and kicked out, um, people whose lives are, have, have been damaged and their navigation systems have crashed. They look at St Matthews and they come here for help. And that is entirely because of St Matthew's real work in the community, which continues every day. It's not because of a mission statement, you know, it really isn't. It's because of good people who work hard, who are finding it tough and nevertheless reach out to others. And that's what it's all about. In fact, that's what it's all about and that's the only thing it should be about. We are not a museum for some spiritual tradition. We are not. We are a gymnasium to stretch our community and ourselves in a more compassionate way. And that's what we do. We're not just about the people who are here who can actually come to St Matthews in the, in the pew, which is a lovely thing. But our members of St Matthews were, are out in the community as well. We are all part of this movement, this discipleship, which at the crossroads asks questions about where we will put our heart and our life, our money and our opportunity. We live at the crossroads. It's the most exciting and sometimes exhausting place to be. When I was first coming up here um, to, uh, to St Matthews, I met an Indigenous man at the railway station um, in Melbourne. And, uh, and he said about, about Albury, and I said, where have we gone? Albury, oh, Albury, he said, for us, for Indigenous populations, he said, uh, it's at the crossroads. And he said, the crossroads is a good place to be. Well, I've never forgotten that. Um, and I like a bit of indigenous uh, wisdom, uh, which has encouraged me to, to look at this as a great opportunity. And it continues to be. I was just thinking, and this is what I'm going to hit into your court. I thought, um, in a world which is uh, crying out in terms of uh, finances, maybe we should be making um, our funerals cheaper. Maybe we should make weddings cheaper. Maybe we should make everything cheaper. Maybe we should be offering more and more services for people because in a situation of economic hardship and bad news, what is good news? It was not about responding in a financial way. And now that will be, that is not, I can tell you, on any synod paper. The diocese will not be in the faintest interested in that because that's not where their heart is because they have an institution to run. But we don't. We don't have an institution to run. Uh, if it's true that God has come to the world in human form, he did not come to, do, to, to start an institution or a book club. Uh, what he did is he has given us a new way to live. And so, wouldn't it be a waste if we didn't live it? What an absolute shocking waste of an opportunity. What the world needs now is love, sweet love. Isn't that right? Was that from another, another moment? We, we can be good news for the world who really needs it. What a wonderful, exciting opportunity that is. It gives strength and sense to the wonderful music that we sing. It gives strength and, and sense to the wonderful building that we maintain, to the glorious garden, to the, uh, to the acts of kindness that every day are run out uh, from St Matthew's. It makes sense of the whole thing. So back to Father's Day. John Ernest Bode was a clergyman born in London and who was ordained. He really wanted to be a poet. He was continually disappointed though. He always was um, putting himself up for, uh, for new jobs and they kept on throwing him back into the basket. Well, he did do some things for his children though, as a father. And uh, it came to their confirmation. And he looked at the hymn book and he said, none of this fits just doesn't do it. it. It may have fitted, he said, a couple of hundred years ago, but it doesn't fit now, not for my kids. And so he wrote a poem which he turned uh, into a hymn for the confirmation of his daughter and his two sons in 1866. And that was modern then. And in fact, it, it took such hold, the bishop said, don't put this one in confirmations. I'm sick of hearing it. Well, we're still singing it. It's so popular um, that uh, I think in, in most, uh, and we're spec it's so popular we're singing it today. And these are such familiar words, and it's all about being at the crossroads. It's about our individual priorities. 
It's a, it's a question that we answer every day through the life of St Matthews, and I'm so very proud to be part of that answer. O oh, Jesus, I have promised to serve thee to the end. Be thou forever near me, my master and my friend. I shall not fear the battle if thou art by my side, nor wander from the pathway if thou wilt be my guide. O oh, let me see thy footmarks, and in them plant my own. My hope to follow duly is in thy strength alone. O oh, guide me, call me, draw me, uphold me to the end, and then in heaven receive me, my Saviour and my friend. In the name of the Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Of course, uh, being at the crossroads, uh, it's all about uh, decisions and also those crossroads have, a, have a, a personal dimension to them. And uh, this week, uh, Katie and Jack actually, uh, there we are, sitting up there, all set to go. Um, they, uh, they actually came to a crossroads themselves because uh, they're 60 years married. Uh, this week. So why don't we give them a little round of applause, shall we? Uh, and so, uh, you know, it's very special. Um, I mean, we've, Ukraine is, is a long way away, uh, but you know that uh, Katie was born there, came over here as a seven or eight year old child, um, and so there's a special connection, a human personal um, connection uh, with those children who are over there, over there now and those families. Um, so I'm going to ask for Katie to lead us in that prayer, but I'm going to ask Jack to go up with her because actually here they are walking down the aisle together. Is that right? Holding hands is nice. There, why don't we give them a little round of applause, shall we? So thank God you came out here. Yes. <laughs> and met Jack. And met Jack. That's right. Prayer of Ukraine. God of peace and justice, we pray for the people of Ukraine today. We pray for peace and the laying down of weapons. We pray for all the, who fear tomorrow, that your spirit of comfort will draw near to them. We pray for those, pow those with power over war or peace, for wisdom, discernment and compassion to guide their decisions. Above all, Pray for all the precious children at risk and in fear, that you would hold and protect them. We pray in the name of Jesus, Prince of Peace. Amen. Amen. And God bless you both as well in uh, 60 years and, uh, and many, many more. And also the family you've also built. So another little round of applause as they go lovingly back. Oh, one moment. Hold there. Stay a second. There we are. Hold and stay there. You may kiss the bride. <laughs> now, Anna Gorham, the head of our pastoral care team, is leading us in prayer. God, our Maker, you have created a world of beauty and abundance and fashioned humanity in your own image. And as we pray for your world and your church, Lord, in your mercy, hear Amen. our prayer. We pray for the preservation of the earth, for creatures whose survival is threatened, for places of beauty that are polluted and destroyed. When we are careless in our stewardship of the earth's treasures, when we are greedy for an unjust share of its bounty, reshape us in your hands until we are ready to truly follow after you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for peace and prosperity, for leaders of nations and all in government, for your people in places of conflict and suffering, remembering especially the people of Ukraine and Pakistan at this time when we use our power to exploit the weak, 
when we remain silent in the face of injustice. Reshape us in your hands until we are ready to truly follow after you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the Universal Church, for all who preach your gospel of salvation, for the clergy and people of this parish. When we do not put you first in our lives, when our commitment falters and we stray from your path, reshape us in your hands until we are ready to truly follow after you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all in need or distress, for those who are hungry, homeless or unemployed, for those in grief, despair or pain. When we push the most vulnerable to the fringes of our community, when we are unmoved by the plight of our sisters and brothers, reshape us in your hands until we are ready to truly follow after you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask that our friends and loved ones who are ill may know your love and protection. We give thanks for those who are at rest in you, who have found new peace and life. Rest eternal, grant to them, O Lord, and, and let light life perpetual life. shine upon them. Lord, we give you thanks that you renew, refresh, and restore us. Trusting in your love, we ask all these prayers through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We sing the hymn, O Jesus, I have promised to serve thee to the end.
And for those people who are new to St Matthews, you may not know, but of course, uh, hopefully we all know that because of the place we are at the crossroads, really, in the state way, uh, here at St Matthews in Albury, there are people in real need come here every day, and because of their, the generosity of our community, we're able to do something about that need. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have these gifts to share. Accept and use our offerings for your glory and for the service of your kingdom. Blessed be God forever. Thank you. As we come to the altar today as well, asking uh, for uh, God to renew and refresh us, we also give thanks for fathers. I'm going to ask for Jonathan to light a candle uh, just at the front there and um, before you go today you might also care to, uh, to do so. Uh, to thinking about um, our, our fathers, those people who have looked after us in uh, so many ways. It might be uh, your father, grandfather, godfather, uh, it might be a, a stranger or a neighbour. And uh, as we come to the altar today, offering ourselves to God, we give thanks for all those who are fathers and uh, and. Uh, Perhaps great grandfathers and all those with a special care uh, for us during our lives. Thank you, Jonathan. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. And this is our preface praying for the world and praying for decisions that we make day by day. For you are the hope of the nations, the builder of a city that is yet to come. Your love, made visible in Christ Jesus, brings home the lost, restores the sinner, and gives dignity to the despised. Therefore, with all of your creation, we glorify your name, forever praising you and singing. Lord God, send your Holy Spirit that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them, and said, Drink of this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Lord of all life, through the power of your Spirit, help us to work together for that day 
when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth through Jesus Christ our Lord, with whom and in whom, in the friendship of the Holy Spirit, we worship you, Father, in songs of never-ending praise. for peace, justice and forgiveness as Jesus has taught his friends. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us in the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. This bread is broken in many pieces, but together we share God's love, for we all share in one bread. Jesus is the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. God's love shines for all his people. God welcomes all her children. All are invited. All are welcome. Come.
Let's say together the famous peace prayer attributed to St. Francis of Assisi. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it's in giving that we receive, it's in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it's in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. Loving God, show us the way so we might see you more clearly, love you more dearly, follow you more nearly, day by day. You send us into the world you love. Give us grace to go thankfully and with courage in the power of your spirit. Amen. To ask for uh, Robin Slade, who's one of our church wardens, uh, to bring us our notices. And Robin, of course, is uh, very busy, <laughs> as we all are, but uh, uh, Robin's uh, job as a psychologist in this period uh, with COVID and all those other things have been uh, very onerous, I think. And... Uh, Anyway, thank you for making time. Thank you, Father Peter. There are offertory bags um, for you when you depart St Matthews. There is also the tap and go machine. As Vicky would say, each tap is $10 and you may tap as often as you like. If you would like to make a donation, you can also do that online. The account details are there. Next week, we have tunes on Tuesday on... Um, should be great music, bring your lunch and enjoy the time. There's also a Murray Conservatorium Choir concert next Saturday evening. And on Sunday, the Saturday the 17th of September, the Tudor Choristers Concert and the Children's Church on Sunday the 18th of September. And I hope that everybody has a wonderful Father's Day for all the fathers present and past but also for all the father figures that we have had in our lives. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much. Oh, <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> Get out the defibrillator. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> the voice from one eye. That's right, from the father of the choir. There we are. <laughs> Uh, our father who are upstairs, that's right. Um, so, uh, <laughs> yes, that's right. Even song, even song tonight. There we are <laughs> at five o'clock. And uh, it's a, it is a, it's a marvelous experience. Also, it, it links us with the Anglican Church across the world and across the centuries as well. And uh, even song is the song, is the form of service that our, our grandfathers, our great grandfathers, and great great grandfathers. Um, were um, knew so well as well, so it's lovely to be um, involved in that beautiful service. And also, thank you for things musical. Um, that uh, Hannah here, Hannah, would like to stand up. That's right. I know Hannah was uh, was uh, well. She's a, a young. Um, she was a child organist, and now she's a young lady organist because she's 18 this week. Um, and so it's wonderful to have uh, organists. Very few female organists around the world, really. Not enough. Uh, but I'm so pleased that it's a Matthews that, uh, that we have one It's getting um, better and better as the weeks go by and lovely to hear you play every now and again as well. So big round of applause and happy birthday to you. Well done. Our final hymn by, by John Bell. Uh, John Bell is um, a most interesting person, uh, most interesting, uh, a Scottish um, he was an activist as a student, um, as a clergyman, um, and, uh, and, and he's evolved, he's evolved as a human being, I think. Um, and uh, again, he also writes um, another song which is about being at the crossroads um, and asking those questions, hearing the questions and answering them. Uh, Would you come and follow me?
with you. And also with you. We open our hearts to receive God's blessing. Grace to you and peace from God the Creator, goodness to you and peace from Christ the Redeemer, guidance to you and peace from the Holy Spirit of God and the blessing of God the Father, the grace of God the Son, the friendship of God the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us and those we love and those for whom we pray today and always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace as we continue to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. God.